Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Higadoshi, When They Cry, Chapter 1. I did just that. Th thank goodness you look well. I was worried. Sorry, I'll be fine tomorrow. Mion showed a complete lack of concern for someone who was recovering, and Raina looked like she was worried about me from the bottom of her heart. It didn't look like there was anything behind those expressions, so she's back to normal stuff. I thought we might hang out for a bit, but it looks like you're not quite in the condition for it. Hmm, you don't say. It seemed my face appeared a bit sullen. Then, here, Keiichi-kun. These are Mochi, Michan's grandma maid. Raina held out, out the package wrapped in newspaper. There might be about five in here. It was quite hefty. Ah, thanks. Send my regards to your grandma, Mian. Yep. Ah, there's one I made in here, in there as well. I wonder if Keiichi can, can guess which one. <laughs> this is Keiichi-chan's homework since he missed the club meeting today. There are letters on each Moki, uh, so I'll ask you tomorrow. Were, were you checking if I was feeling better, or did you just come here for club activities? Yep, yep, looking fine. Guess you'll be able to make it tomorrow. <laughs> Man, what are you going to do if my fever comes back because of your shenanigans? Michan, we shouldn't be making such a racket. Let's go. The other people here will get angry. Both of them thought my both of them thought my parents were home. It was because the entranceway was a mess. You're right. Let's get going. Ah, by the way, Keiichan. Yeah. Oh no. Oh okay. What did you eat for lunch? Oh no. What did you eat for lunch? The sudden question stalled on me, and I went wide-eyed when I saw Mion. Did they know I went? Oh. No, no, no. Alright. I had never seen her like that. It was a highly unsettling visage. But why is she asking about what I ate for lunch? What she said was so inane and almost meaningless. People saw me go into the car with the cop and word got around town. Oh. The way she said it, it was almost like she didn't even care at all about what I ate. I, I ate out. She must have suspected that I was with Oishi-san. Anyway, I felt that if I hesitated or tried to change the subject, then they'd read too deep into it. So I tried answering as quickly as possible. Except, contrary to the efforts I had made, there was a pause before they replied. Hmm. So you ate out for lunch, Keiichi-kun. The glimmer from Reina's eyes had changed at some point as well. It was now sharp as if to make me feel the feigned ignorance behind her words even more. As if she already knew, that's how it looked to me. Well, was it good? Why are you asking me this? Mian was speaking in an unusually low tone, almost as if she knew what I, I had eaten at the restaurant in town. No, I, I'm overthinking this. I mean, both of them should have been in school at lunchtime. There was no way they could have known where I was. Seems you're with a rather austere-looking older guy. Who was he? Flop. The package with the mochi I was holding slipped out of my hands. I could tell the blood had drained from my face, making me go pale. Oh, Keiichi-kun, who was he? Could it be the person from before, I wonder? I wonder. I could feel the back of my throat going dry. This was no longer a bluff. They knew everything? How, how did you know that? It took everything I had to finally force those words from my throat. My knees were shaking. Because there's nothing this old man doesn't know. Or there's nothing this old man doesn't know. Mion sneered knowingly and her laugh seemed to carry on forward, or forever. So Keiichi-kun, or Keiichan, what did you talk about? It seems like you got pretty worked up over it too. We, we weren't talking about you guys. It didn't have anything to do with you, Arena. Oh, why'd I say that? Oh, no, her eyes are still weird. Hmm. Isn't it about, isn't it a, a bit strange to hear our names come up even though nobody asked about that? Hmm. Reyna's unwavering gaze pierced through my eyes and peered further inside me. I dug my own grave. My heart was throbbing so much, it felt like I was going to explode. Well, 
Whatever you're trying to hide, this old man already sees through it all. Remember that. I couldn't even shake my head. It took everything I had to stop my teeth from chattering. She never let her gaze break mine, even as she tilted her head slightly. Hey, Chikun, you don't look so good. I think you should lie down. That's true. We should both head back home. As if nothing had happened, they both giggled at each other and started making their way out. I hadn't moved a muscle since I had dropped a package of mochi. Moki. As they left, the door slowly closed behind them. All I could do was stare. As if I couldn't move until the door was completely closed. Just as the door was about closed, it opened again slightly with a sudden creak, sending my heart racing once again. A single eye peered through that narrow slit, and Mion's hawkish gaze peered at me once again. See you, Keiichan. <laughs> yeah. I'd hate it if you miss school tomorrow, alright? Thud. The door closed. I wasn't able to move a muscle, even after their low laughter died off into the distance, and silence once again enveloped the room. Coming back to my senses, the first thing I did was lock the door. They knew what Oyashi-san and I talked about. Why? Why? How? No, that wasn't important. Thinking about it now, all I could have, all of it could have been overheard from the beginning when Oyashi-san met me. Just as Mion said, I couldn't hide anything. Then, what were they trying to tell me? That part was obvious. They were warning me not to say anything unnecessary. What did they deem unnecessary? I only talked with Oishi-san about one thing, and they were warning me that that was unnecessary? What was it that Oishi-san talked to me about? The incidents involving Oishira-sama's curse that occurred every year weren't individual cases, but were connected as a whole? As well as the fact that there Maybe multiple perpetrators hitting within Hinimizawa. No, more precisely, that Mion, Reina, Sotoko, and Rika-chan were all suspicious. Is that what they were warning me against? What, what kind of nonsense am I thinking about? I hit my own face hard enough to let out a large slap. If only that would wake me from this nightmare. But for some reason, it felt like I was punching a blanket. It was almost laughably plain, painless. Calm down, Keiichi Mayabara. When did I become such a pessimist? Calm down. Calm down. Settle down and sort things out. The, re the reason Mion knew I was eating lunch with Oishi-san was probably because somebody from Hinemizawa just happened to be there at the time. They must have told Mion that I was there. That made the most sense. Plus, Come to think of it, she didn't ask me where I ate lunch, did she? She only asked, was it good? They were just curious as I was together with someone not from Hinimizawa. It's not as if they had any ulterior motives. That's it. That, that has to be it. Thinking about it that way, it was the same with Reina. I was just being strangely ambiguous about when I met with Oyashi-san, and Reina was just correcting me on that. That's when I was bewildered by the change in character from the usual mild-mannered Reina and was just startled by it. That's the most natural way of thinking about it. It felt like my mind was mixed up like a tangled mess of spaghetti. Deep red marinara sauce would have poured out of my nose and ears if you squeezed my head. Thinking that, I suddenly felt like vomiting. I really didn't want that to happen, so I stopped holding my head. Lately, I had no idea what anyone was saying. Spending time with them was fun. I didn't feel like there was any sort of hidden agenda. I really do think that they're a good bunch of people. When I just moved here and couldn't make heads or tails of everything, they were really kind to me. Reina was really, Reina was really kind and always looked after me. As long as that strange affliction didn't rear its ugly head, she was really pretty cute. Mian is also a really good person. She didn't care about anyone's age or gender and was optimistic and outgoing. I was never bored with when I was with her. And t 
talking about talking of not getting bored, rambunctious Satoka was a good person for that too. She was pretty bratty, but that was just the way she interacted with others. Rika-chan was the same way. She didn't speak often, but that didn't mean she was always silent. They're my friends. But after hearing of the better untold secrets of Hinamizawa from Oyashi-san and Tometake-san, when I was told about Oyashira-sama's curse, things started going crazy. Then, hearing from Oyashi-san that Mina, uh, Mina, Mion, Reina, Sotoko, and Rika-chan were all suspicious. After that, everyone changed. That's right. It all started getting weird after Oyashi-san told me all that strange stuff. At that time, I really should have. I should have just not listened to those weird stories. And I even shouldn't have heard about the past incidents from Tometakis on the night of the Watanagashi. If I had just hadn't gotten that strange sense of curiosity, if I just hadn't. That's right. So that's why they killed Tometakis on. That impud. Imp Pudent outsider speaking to the likes of me after everybody went out of their way to keep it a secret from me. They'll probably kill Oishi-san as well for trying to unearth what everybody was warning me was better left buried. Beside that, he was unforgivable for spewing words that made me doubt the others. Of course, a guy like that is going to be killed. Both Tometake-san and Oishi-san were nothing but outsiders after all. They were entities who couldn't coexist with the people of Hinimizawa. Those guys should just fall to Oyashira-sama's curse and die. It wasn't their fault. It was my fault for not being able to hold back my curiosity. It wasn't their fault. It, it wasn't their fault. 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 I settled into a daze. It was a lethargic feeling that I had just gotten up, but the ominous chill that haunted me had subsided. I was fine for now. I was no longer frightened. I had completely recovered. I'll go to school tomorrow, right as rain. I'll greet everyone. I'll take part in club activities. I'll definitely be fun. It had to be fun. I was one of them, after all. Ah, that reminds me. I need to eat those mochi. I hope I'm, be, um, hope I'm able to tell which one Raina made. I remember the homework that the two brought with them when they visited me. But wow, our club did delivery. That was something else. I picked up the package I dropped on the floor and handed, uh, headed to the living room. It would be nice, I guess, to have it with some tea. Or to have some tea with it. To fill my mouth with mochi while drinking tea. Oh, this was quite a delectable situation I was in. Opening up, the new, new, opening up the new paper wrapping, there were five plump red bean paste mochi fit snuggly inside. Oh, that sounds good. There were letters written from left to right on the newspaper. A, B, C, D, and E. Now then, they said Raina made one of these. I wonder which one. There wasn't much different in how they looked. They smelled and appeared about the same. This was a pretty difficult problem. The biggest difference was probably their shape. I wasn't sure what kind of person Mion's grandma was, but Raina's had to be different from hers. Looking carefully, I could see one mochi that was made very neatly. So while that, just by staring at it, one could tell it stood out. Looks like this challenge depends on whether or not this one is Raina's. Calm down and think even harder. Mion had said her grandma made a ton of them and was told to give some out, if I remember correctly. So that meant four of these were from that large batch. Then what about Reina? She probably only made one. She probably spent quite a bit of time on it. Meaning, the one Mana raid was this one, E. For a moment, I thought it may have been a trap Mion laid, as she knew I'd pick up on it. But that probably wasn't the case. I wouldn't be so sure if I knew Mion had made it, but since she said Reina made it, it probably wasn't a trap. All right, my tea is ready too. I'll start with the defending champ, Mion's grandma. Let's see. Hmm, not bad. The smooth bean paste and soft chewy texture left little to be desired. The tea I drank afterwards also accentuated the experience. 
This was an exquisite piece of work. Now, how about Reina's? The creation was so delicate, one would think it was a high-class Japanese dessert. Since I normally had quite the appetite, I was slightly worried about the size of the portion. But, well, a first bite! This was quite a difficult to one. This was quite a difficult one to judge. Actually, the ingredients were exactly the same, so it was li there was little difference in flavor. What was different was how it was shaped at the end, so it was to be expected. So the defining, deciding factors would be presentation and volume. The well-formed and well-sized champion versus Reyna, the challenger, with the size you just couldn't get enough of. I had I'd only had one bite of Reyna's. I'll probably have to wait until after I was done eating to make my decision. Maybe there was something hidden inside that caused an upset. Choo choo. Hmm. It seems my prediction was right. My tongue touched something. It didn't feel like something edible, so I reached in with my fingers and grabbed it. Oh no. Oh no. What? What was this? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, it's not good. Before I could fully comprehend what it was, I threw away the rest of the mochi I was eating as fast as I could. It slammed against the wall, causing the bean jam to splatter. Then, after sticking for a moment, it slid down to the floor. I was dumbstruck by my own actions. What was I doing? Raina had gone out of her way to make it for me. How could I... Dumbstruck, I looked at the hand that performed such a vile act... Then I remembered what I had taken out of my mouth. At first I thought it was a hair. Even though it was shorter than Mion's, Reyna's hair was still quite long, and it wasn't this short. It was also a bit too hard to be hair. Oh no. It's a needle. It's a needle, isn't it? It was thick enough to roll around on my tongue. There was quite a there was a bit of a metallic sheen on one end of it. Ah yes. There was a hole from where the thread goes through, like it was a sewing needle. Oh. Yes, that's right. It looked very much like a sewing needle. Exactly like one. The end was pointed as well. Quite sharply. It really did look just like a sewing needle. Huh? What did I mean by look very much like a sewing needle? Just a bit ago. I couldn't answer. But a voice inside me already knew and let me know by chattering my molars together. I couldn't stave off the terror welling up inside me. Suddenly I tasted something metallic and felt a prickling pain in the back of my throat. I stuck my finger at the back of my throat and felt to see, felt around to see if I was bleeding. Suddenly I felt the urge to vomit. The sharp taste of bile irritated the back of my throat. I clasped both hands over my mouth and after writhing in agony, I was somehow able to hold back with the nausea. I was finally able to breathe normally again, but this time my heart was intensely throbbing. Then it finally registered. Exactly what was mixed in the mochi? Before I could think of the correct word, my hands were already on the move. Splat! Plop! Splort! I tossed the rest of the, rest of the mochi against the wall. The geometrical patterns of the scattered bean jam on the wall suddenly invoked a terrible omen in my mind. After looking away, I dashed out to the hall and flew upstairs to my room, where I stayed under my covers until morning. I clutched my own shoulders, howling madly in a mix of fear, anger, sadness, and frustration. This wasn't a threat, or warning, or reminder, nothing as simple as that. What had happened in Hinemizawa? What is happening in Hinemizawa? What would happen? I didn't know the answer to any of those questions. Where did I break a taboo? Regardless, now Reyna and Mion and others, they consider me an enemy. And they thought I should just die. I won't let you kill me. Not for such a pointless reason. I fell into a restless sleep as if I was crushed by my negative emotions. It was as if I was being drawn into a billowing bottomless marsh.
I have received new chips. What's a medicine that makes you commit suicide and threat? A few new tips. Ooh, I just got an achievement unlocked. Hard to swallow. Let's cut to the chase. Is there a drug that causes someone to kill themselves? Not directly, no. That's quite a roundabout response. You're saying there's one that does it indirectly? Something that puts you into a suicide mental state like that? That's hard to say. What would a suicidal mental state be? Like a person with a serious bipolar disorder. It's believed that people are most likely to attempt suicide when swinging from depression to mania. Clinical depression and bipolar disorder are different. Clinical depression indicates a prolonged state of depression, whereas bipolar disorder is characterized by a passive depressed, depressed state accompanied by a very active manic state. Individuals with clinic, clinical depression suffer from low self-esteem and are quite pessimistic, but rarely commit suicide. They do not have the willpower to commit suicide, nor does mania on its own lead to suicide. That has an opposite effect, filling the person with confidence and making them feel as though they were walking on air. Thus, they do not commit suicide. That's interesting. Neither state causes suicide, but when the condition changes, they might do so. There is a desire to commit suicide when in a state of depression, but they do not have the willpower to commit such a formidable act. But when they enter mania, they gain a burst of willpower and their body moves as they desire. I see. So it means they gain the willpower to commit suicide. That's how it goes. That's why patients are given sedatives during that time to keep them from acting on their impulses. Then, was Tomitake but bipolar? People who suffer from bipolar disorder generally commit suicide by mere, by more civilized means. Like say hanging or jumping off a building. Self-harm as though going through withdrawal is completely different. Tomitake's death wasn't civilized, so one would think it was caused by some foreign substance. As I said from the start, tell me of a drug that causes someone to commit suicide. There were reports that methamphetamine overdoses produce a condition that resembles bipolar disorder. It's a stimulant. Barbiturate overdoses are also reported to cause erratic behavior. That's a sleep aid. There were no signs of stimulants. Are there any other possibilities? All I can think of is that it's some sort of illness, something like Graves' disease, which affects the thyroid and is known to cause symptoms that resemble bipolar disorder. But Graves' disease has many characteristic symptoms of its own. The diseased or the deceased exhibited none of them. I wonder, is there something that could happen more spontaneously? Something that fits this case and would cause someone to want to commit suicide all of a sudden? Are you familiar with organic mental with organic mental disorders? In short, it's a condition where the brain is out of whack due to physical injury or illness. It can be caused by drugs, but it can also be caused by physical trauma, encephalitis, a stroke, or even tumors. Basically, even without a drug, one can, can succumb to an irregular mental state. The deceased was surrounded after being chased, and his life was in danger, right? All that stress could have messed with his brain chemistry. He could have hit his head, and those factors combined might have caused him to mutilate himself. It's a possibility. Could you explain it to me in simpler terms? Bwahaha. Basically, he knocked his noggin in the brawl, and that made him go haywire. <laughs> <laughs> then his lady didn't have an intent to kill. Just smacked him in a bad, bad place when he nicked some change. Two plump men laughed hoarsely. But of course, it's not like that. <clears throat> Undoubtedly. If it was habitual drug use, if it was something mental, the deceased body holds the key. How are things on your end? Oh my goodness, look at the time. I need to get back or Kuma-chan will get angry with me. Yeah, good luck. Best wishes. Best wishes. All right. Threats. Hmm. So the guys just now, they had national diet badges. Then his prefectural assembly member and city council, councilor Sonozaki. That's interesting. 
the prefectural assembly member and city council are related. It's dirty, is what it is. Shouting each other's name during elections. While one is up for re-election, the other holds an assembly and they double up their campaign activities. Blatantly. I don't know how much this stuff... I don't know much about this stuff. But isn't that against the rules of the election? As long as they have no prior consultation, there are no restrictions on their political activities. Kumachan, the investigation division is going to be pretty tough for you. You should at least brush up on election policies. I'm not suited for the intelligence division. Cause I'm dumb. <laughs> there was a prefectural assembly member Sonozaki and city councilor Sonozaki. Also, the mayor of Hinamizawa. All of them involved with Sonozaki family. What the crap? Oh, what crap? Looks like they were seen off by the department chief and deputy chief. It came to me. That night, when the chief invited me along to get some Odin, uh, Odin, I thought that was it. You have a lot of connections, so you might have heard something. Did you? Nope. Not a thing. Ma'am, I'll take the tofu fritter and fish cake. A counselor barked at me in the police chief's steed. Oh my, is that so? Ma'am, I'll take another bowl. Prefectural, assemb Prefectural Assembly member Sonozaki and City Councilor Sonozaki were both intimidating. Our snot-nosed career police chief couldn't even handle being yelled at by them. They're like Yakuza. A petition with your name came up regarding how the investigation of the Hinamizawa incident is being handled. Goodness me. I'm not the faintest. <laughs> no need to play dumb. You're reopening the past cases regarding Hinamizawa, aren't you? I've already got my hands full with Tometake's death, actually. <laughs> really? If that's true, then there's no problem. There was a period of silence. While we were silent, we made headway on our food and drink. Whew, that was quite the feast. This, this month has been a bunch of losses for me, so my wallet was feeling the pinch. Much appreciated. Nah, it's nothing. Tell me a good horse again. I'll bet on the same one as you. <laughs> I haven't been doing well there lately. I haven't been able to read the horses at all. Taxi! I'm going by the train. The police chief is taking a taxi. I have my own car, but it'd be rash to drive it home. Can't blow it right before retirement with the DUI. Even though we could still rattle it off, it looked like his legs were already goo. Pushing him into the cab, I gave the driver the police chief's address. Well, see you again tomorrow. Happy New Year. Oishi-san. Yeah, yeah. The past, incidents, the past incidents have all been closed. Stop lumping them all together. Those villagers half believe it's really a curse. Well, I'm not convinced. You're going to be retiring next year, aren't you? Weren't you going to pay off your mortgage with your pension and move up to Hokkaido with your mom? Mother pines to return to the land of her birth. It's the least I can do. And the pension, well, it'll let me in, uh, enjoy myself in Susukino. Uh, Susuki, nah. The police chief may have issue. Uh, oh, this police chief may issue a special retirement salary raise. He says, a public servant's pension is calculated based on their monthly salary. So if you were to get a raise right before retirement, your bonus to your salary would be inflated, and you'd get a heavy surplus of funds. That tends to be how it's done around here. Of course, it's not a custom that's thought of highly. The difference between the bonus and the pension is quite a bit. I'd expect nothing less exemplary from our egghead chief. But, well, they say our salary is compensation for our hard work, but in the end, of, but the, in the end it really just has to do with the passage of time. That's not something I can laugh at, but I'll laugh through, through it anyways. I don't think it's anything exemplary. But given how hard you've worked, it's not odd you're getting that much of a pension. I'd like to get that much myself. If I can get it, well, of course I'd want it. Nah, <laughs> you'll get it. You're an adult after all. Sorry for holding you up here, driver. Thank you very much. I closed the door roughly, interrupting the chief's conversation a bit rudely. 
It looked like the chief still had something to say, but he just smiled wryly and waved. I waved in return. The cab sped up gradually and soon disappeared among the sea of lights. <laughs> oh man. I wonder if I really can repay that loan. And with that, that's where I'm going to end this episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.